Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we started with the circuit right here, and we found that the initial current in the circuit before the switch opened was equal to 1 amp, and the voltage to cross capacitor was equal to 6 volts. We also found that the damping factor was 9, and the natural frequency of the circuit, this part of the circuit after the switch opens, and now we have a source-free RCL circuit, the natural frequency was 10, which means if the damping factor is less than the natural frequency, we had a underdamped system. And then we found the natural damped frequency of 4.359 in the circuit. We also found the current as a function of time, with the only exception was that we did not yet found the value for the constants A1 and A2. So what we need to do now is find those values. So we probably want to start with saying, what is the current at t equals zero. So we're trying to find the current i when time is equal to zero. And of course, that should be equal to the current in the circuit just before time equals zero. So that would be equal to i when time is equal to zero minus, which we said was equal to one amp. So right before the switch opens, we had one amp of current in there. Right after, right after the switch opens, we still will have one amp of current to this part of the circuit and zero current through here, but at least through that part of the circuit, we would expect to see one damp of current at that point. So what we're going to do now is solve this equation for I equals T equals zero. So when I, when T is equal to zero, which we now know is going to be equal to one amp, is going to be equal to E to the minus nine times zero times A1 times the cosine of zero plus A2 times the sine of zero because when we plug in zero for T, we end up with the cosine of zero and the sine of zero. Now, of course, the sine of zero is zero and the cosine of zero is equal to one and E to the zero power is equal to one. So we have I when time is equal to zero is equal to one times A1 times one plus zero and we know that that is going to be equal to one amp. So here on the left side, we have A1 is equal to one amp, and there it is. We just solved that first part of the equation. We now know the value for A1. It's equal to one amp. Now that we found A1, we now have to find A2. And the way to do that is we're going to find the rate of change of the current with respect to time when time equals zero. So we're going to need this equation, and then we're going to have to take the derivative of that equation and set them equal to each other. So first, let's take this. We can say that the IDT, when time is equal to zero, is equal to minus one over L, now L is 0 0.5, times V initial. Now V initial is equal to six volts, but we have to be careful about the orientation of that. Because notice when we go around the loop, this is voltage rise, but this is a voltage drop. So V initial is essentially a negative six volts going from here to here around the loop. So it's minus six plus the resistance, which would be nine ohms in the loop, times the current when time equals zero, which was one, which is what we found previously. So here, this is equal to a negative one over 0.5, that's a negative two times minus six plus nine, that's a positive three. So this is equal to minus six amps per second. So that's the rate of change of the current with respect to time when time is equal to zero. So now the next thing we have to do is we have to take this equation, solve this equation for the change of current with respect to time and set that equal to minus six amps to find the value for A2. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have di dt is equal to, so we have a product. We have this multiplied times this, so we have to use the product rule. So it's the first, it's e to the minus 9t times the derivative, what's inside the brackets. So the derivative cosine is the negative sign. So let's go ahead and call this, well, yeah, we can leave the number in there. So we know that a1 is equal to one, right? So a1 is equal to one. So we have the derivative of cosine is the negative sine times the derivative of the angle. So it would be minus 4.359 times the sine of 4.359t plus the derivative of that, which would be plus the derivative of sine is a cosine. So it would be a2 
times 4.359 times the cosine of 4.359t. And so we have the first times the derivative of the second plus the second, which would be a1, which is 1, times the cosine of 4.359t plus a2 times, well, uh, times the sine, the sine of 4.359t times the derivative of the first so times the derivative of this, which is a minus 9e to the minus 9t. All right, so there we have the derivative of current with respect to time. And now what we need to do here is set that equal to 0. Not set equal to 0, but solve it for i equals 0. So di, when time equals 0, with respect to time, is equal to, when i is 0, this is e to the 0, times, this times the sine of 0. Now, that would be, the sine of 0 would be 0, because I don't have to do anything here, right? The sine of 0, 0, plus 8 times the cosine, so a2 times 4.359 times the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. And let's see here, then plus the cosine of 0, which is 1, plus 8 times the sine of 0, which is 0, times minus 9, probably want to put parentheses around it, minus 9, times e to the minus 9t, which would be e to the 0. Hmm. Got a little ahead of myself. So it would be e to the 0. And we know that that is equal to minus 6, because that's what we worked out over here. So we set this whole thing equal to minus 6. Now let's simplify. So e to the 0 is 1. So here we have cosine of 0 is 1. So we have 4.359 times a2 plus 1 times a minus 9 times 1. So that would be plus a minus 9 or plus a minus 9. Go ahead, do that. Equals minus 6. So we can bring the minus 9 over. So we have 4.359a2 is equal to positive 3, or a2 is equal to 3 divided by 4.359, which is equal to, and we're almost there, 3 divided by 4.359 is 0 0.688. So it would be 0 0.688, and now we also have found the value for A2. So now we need some space here to finally, and let me use a different color, finally come up with the equation. Let's come over here, all the way down here. So now we have an equation for the current, i as a function of time, is equal to e to the minus 9t times a1, which is 1, times the cosine of 4.359t plus a2, and a2 we just found, which is 0 0.688, so 0 0.688 times the sine of 4.359t, and put a bracket around it, and this is the final solution that we were looking for we now have found the current as a function of time of this part of the circuit, which is a source-free RCL circuit, after the switch opens up and everything kind of runs down. It's going to be an oscillating circuit, uh, or I should say an oscillating current, that slowly diminishes to zero as the resistors in that part of the circuit slowly take the energy out of the system. And that will tell you what the current is after the switch opens up. And that is how it's done.